So this last week I was in Breckenridge, Colorado, which is right outside of Vail. We were trying to ski and snowboard, had a great time, and I had two experiences with businesses. One was amazing. It was a restaurant called Latour, which is right outside of Vail. It's in Vail, real nice restaurant, amazing experience. And I tweeted it out, I put it on Instagram. It was just a phenomenal experience I had with them. And then I had a terrible experience with Avis, and I did the same. I put it on Twitter, Avis contact. I'll tell you a little bit about what happened with Avis. And I said, you know what, Mario? How about if we do an episode on customer service and customer experience? The last one we did, I think, on YouTube, that thing's got over 300,000 views, and a lot of you guys who use it with bigger companies, Fortune 500 companies. I am such a stickler about customer service and customer experience that when I go to a restaurant, I pay so close attention to it because I think it matters for every business. The reason why Amazon is doing so well is because this is an area they pay very close attention to. So with that being said, I'll give you eight common complaints customers make, you and I, and 19 mistakes companies make when it comes down to customer service. So before I get into it, I'm gonna have a PDF at the end. You'll be able to pull this off and say, you know, uh, download and say, this is a mistake we make, this is what we do, how can we improve this, and do whatever you wanna do with your business. So stick around by the end of the video to get that free PDF. And if you got any questions, comments, thoughts, comment on the bottom, and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, click on the subscribe button and the notification side right next to it so you can watch the rest of the videos we have. So let me get right into it. Eight common complaints you and I customers make. Here's the first one. I've been on hold for 15 minutes. Have you ever said that? You've been on a line for 15 minutes. No one's answering you. They're not even giving you an option on callback. I've been on hold for 15 minutes. Then they answer the call. The second one. So this is not the right department. Let me try to get a hold of somebody that can help you. Okay, great. Well, it's also not my department. Let me try to get a supervisor because they can approve this. Well, who can really help me out? Why are you transferring to four different people? Which leads me to the next one. Tell me if you've experienced this one before. So the person that transferred me to you, did they explain you my frustration or the situation I'm in? No. So you mean to tell me I have to explain it to you again for eight minutes? Yes. Oh, that is so frustrating, right? Here's the fourth one. You know how you talk to somebody and they're monotone? Yes, I understand your situation, sir. Uh, let me see what I can do for you. I hope I make your day better. You don't care. You're not really trying to do customer service. It's just kind of like going down the script. Here's the fifth one. The product doesn't do what you said it'll do. You said the product's gonna do, you overpromise and underdeliver. Number six, the competitor said they'll do it better than you, but you don't do this. So for instance, a company will say, well, we don't do it that way. Well, we can't do this. And you say, well, Hertz does. Well, this place does. The other day, I'm at Neiman Marcus. I had a Giuseppe shoe. I'm like, you know what? I bought it from you, and this size is very tight. I'd like to be able to exchange it for a half size bigger. We have it. Perfect, can I exchange it? No. But Nordstrom does, but Neiman Marcus, does, Neiman Marcus doesn't. So I ask, how come you don't do it? Oh, it's our policy, but Nordstrom does. And the lady happened to be used to work at Nordstrom's back in the days. Number seven, late responses on electronic messages. You try to get back to somebody, it takes a week, five days, three days, two days. Very frustrating. And last but not least, here's what's last but not least. Companies that have zero customer service. I don't mean zero as in bad. No customer service, there is no contact, there is no phone number. You literally have to go online and type in, you know, such and such company's phone number and you still cannot find one, yeah, because they choose not to do that. Now, if you're the business owner, yourself watching this, you have to process these eight different common complaints and say, man, how do I address every one of these things and train my employees, my staff, my customer service, myself, so we don't go through this. By the way, I've run a business, I've been on the customer side end, and I've been on the business owner side end, and I've been on the side that I am the customer service. So I'm the guy running the business, teaching my customer service reps how to do it better, and I've been on the service of trying to deal with customers, and I was ticked off half the time dealing with them, and I've been the customer. So I'm giving you the experience, been in every single aspect of it, and I've been frustrated at every single level of it, which leads me to the next one. 19 common mistakes businesses make with customer service. Let's get into the first one. Here's the first one. Lack of training on how to handle issues. And here's what I mean by lack of training. Somebody comes in, they'll hire you, and then they'll say, well, you know, here's the booklet and go study the customer service part. Okay, I read it, as if I read it. It's like being on the airline and they say, uh, is everybody here willing and committing to, uh, uh, you know, uh, opening and following the guidelines in case we have an emergency landing? Oh yes, I need a yes from everybody, yes, yes, yes. And make sure you read the manual. How often have you grabbed that thing and gone through it? That's how some companies treat customer service. And what I mean by training, is role playing. If they say this, you say this. If they say that, you say this. 
if they say this, you say this, you're role playing all those common eight objections and you're role playing, role playing. If they say, I don't know what to say if they say this, that is all part of the training, mistake a company, companies make. Number two, reactive instead of proactive. So you try to argue with the customer, which by the way, you are never going to win. And, and, and let me explain this part to you. Here was the common thread with Avis. So I was in Breckenridge, the moment I dropped off my car, I left my iPhone, you know, the ear pods, I left the case, the white case. So I have the actual ear pods, but the case you charge, I left in the middle, right console. And I went, I went to my flight, I called in the Denver International Avis Airport, called them over and over and over again. They put me on, on hold for 60 minutes and 39 seconds. Secondly, I called their lost and found department. The mailbox was full. I called it again, the mailbox was full. I went through every one of the five numbers to pick that thing up. No one answered. The only one that they answered, the only one that they answered was option number one, which was sales, and they picked up. And a person that answered said, I need to speak to this uh, supervisor. I was on hold for 15 minutes. Then I called Avis directly. When I called Avis directly, and I spoke to them, I told them my situation, I got transferred three times. By the way, every single one of the people I dealt with, I have every single one of their names, except for one person, every single one of them made an excuse about why I'm the one at fault. And they said, well, sir, our policy is the same as everybody else. I said, you don't understand, your policy is not the issue. The issue is your mailbox is full. I can't even leave a message for somebody again. But, but that's, that's, that's not, a, and so excuse, excuse, excuse. I say, you know what? I will never, listen to me, I will never ever use Avis ever again. And I'm saying this publicly to you. I will never use Avis again. Because to them, everything was justification until I finally got a hold of somebody who was a supervisor. The lady's name was Dana. So I'm not gonna give the names of the other people that I messed up, but I will give the name of a lady named Dana, supervisor. She gave me her employee ID number. I'm not gonna put it out there. She said, Patrick, would you mind if I call that number to see if the mailbox is full or not? I said, please do so. She calls, puts me on hold, comes back two minutes later. She says, Patrick, I called twice, and you are right. The mailbox is full, and you are right. This is our mistake. This is not acceptable. The only person that didn't argue, that didn't make an excuse, that didn't justify, the only person was Dana. And so you hear so many companies that want to do that. And by the way, I've done it before as a customer service guy. Working at Bally's before we would justify. It was never effective. And we had to learn to adjust. So all I'm telling you right now, sometimes with the business, if the customer's making an issue, it is an issue that they dealt with. You just need to deal with them and see what you can do to improve that situation for them. Number three, lack of accessibility to customers. What do I mean by lack of accessibility to customers? You are not accessible. I can't get a hold of you. I have a complaint. Sometimes I complain, if I talk to you for 20 minutes, I'm done, I'm over it. But I can't get a hold of you, so the frustration is building up and 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 then boom, you get a negative review. And you could have simply called me to be able to fix that. Number four, not willing to call an audible that may go against your protocol. What do I mean by this? You'll hear businesses that'll say, well, sir, we'd love to do and help you out with that, but that's just not our protocol. That's not your protocol. How often have you experienced something like this? Well, I understand it, but it's not just our protocol. And then you talk to a supervisor, it's not part of our protocol. Look, recently, the Eagles beat the Patriots in a Super Bowl where nobody thought the Eagles were gonna win. Everybody bet on uh, uh, the New England Patriots. You know, the great one, he won the MVP 40 years old. It's just destiny. He's going to win his, you know, sixth Super Bowl. And you know what happens? The Eagles have this play. It's a very weird play. It's a play that a coach came out with in college. And they have shown this play on Facebook over and over again. It's got 20, 30 million views. Where the quarterback goes behind the, uh, the, the other, uh, 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 not the center, the other offensive line, and he tricks everybody. The ball comes to the running back, and then the other guy runs back, audible, boom, throws it to the quarterback, catches it, Nick Foles touchdown, and that was the touchdown that helped them win the New England Patriots because sometimes you got to call an audible. Sometimes you got to call an audible. Same thing with customer service. Sometimes your protocol may need an audible because this situation here, you need to go above and beyond to make this customer happy. And some companies are too rigid. No, no, it is out of our protocol, so I'm not willing to change. That is a mistake long term. Number five, not coming through on your customer service. This one's fairly simple. If you say to a customer you're gonna do something, you kinda gotta come through for it. Number six, lack of organization on customer complaints. What do I mean by this? If you're running a business, you gotta have some kind of a CRM or someplace 
where you make notes of the complaint that the customer made. So the complaint that this customer made is under the existing complaint of this customer. So John Doe, note section, this person was very frustrated with that, 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 that. Then email to the group and maybe your supervisor or maybe you and saying, this person complained about something that I honestly didn't know how to help. What do we do about this? And that threat is being shared as well and documented so you know, maybe we need to have a training opportunity for this to teach the other customer service reps on how to handle an issue like this. Next, let's go to number seven. Giving the customer the runaround. This is Avis. They give me the runaround. I called so many different people and I'm a principal guy and I didn't like that. I don't need the money. I, don't need, I told the guy, I said, listen, I'm not expecting you to give me my money back. I'm expecting you to answer your phone. I don't need another $600 in my pocket. I need service. And I gave you a shot and you didn't come through and three different people gave me the runaround until one person named Dana didn't. 75% of my experience, three out of the four people, gave me the runaround. You don't want to give the runaround to your customers that you're dealing with. Number eight, strictly automation. This is the whole sending the copy paste scripted message to people. Oh, we understand your frustration. We hope we feel better. I hope we made your day better and ta 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 ta. And hopefully you'll have a better opportunity the next time we do this. And you're like, wait a minute, this sounds like a very scripted message that you just gave me rather than actually telling me and show me that you're being real. It's like a robot talking to me. No one likes that nowadays. Number nine, not using the basics. Let me explain to you the basics. When you're speaking to them, thank you, please request I understand. This is not necessarily frustration. It's just etiquette. People like to be self. Thank you for doing business with us. Listen, John, I, I want to share something with you. Uh, first of all, you're frustrated, you're upset. Thank you in the first place for giving us a second shot. And I'm disappointed with the fact that we couldn't come through. Having said that, can you tell me a little bit more about your experience so maybe we can find a way to make this thing better for you? What is it? And they're going to go through it. But to talk to them, yet at the same time, use thank you, use request, use please, use I understand hear them out until you can finally find a way to make it better. Number 10, disregarding loyalty. What do I mean by loyalty? Look, there are certain customers you have that are true believers. Let me explain some to you. You always got to take care of your true believers. If I've been a customer of your gym for 22 years, you better take care of me because I've been telling a lot of people in that 22 year period, imagine how many times people say, where are you going right? I'm going to the gym. Which gym? 24 hour fitness. Every single time somebody asks me where I'm going to work out and I said 24 hour fitness, I am doing free marketing for you for 22 years. You better keep me. If I get a credit card that says been a member of Amex since 2006, that's loyalty. You got to take care of your loyalty a little bit above and beyond everybody else. Number 11, not willing to take ownership immediately. By the way, you ever gotten to an argument with somebody and this is what they say? They say, I can't believe you said this and you made me feel like shit and I, I just cannot stand you. How could you talk to me like that? And that person says this, you ready? That person says this, babe, I am, I am so sorry, man. I totally messed up. It's my fault. <sighs> Dang, they took ownership. Game over. Take ownership. You messed up. There is nothing else. I took ownership. Rather than, well, you also, pa, 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 and then pa, 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 friction. Take ownership. You know what? I'm sorry. Can you, uh, I'm sorry the fact that I made you feel that way. I understand. Can you tell me a little bit more about what caused you to feel this way? Get into it. And then you take it from here, frustration to level nine, to level eight, to level seven, to level six, to level, has it ever happened to you? It's happened to me before. I start like this, and then Dana calmed me down. And I came here, and we're talking like this. Dana, thank you so much. And then I'm thanking her on taking care of me. And I gave her love because you just took ownership and brought him over here. Very simple, right? Number 12, it's assuming, meaning you are assuming that you know what the customer went through. So you'll hear a customer service, sir, sir I get it. I, understand. Get, I get it. I get it, sir. I get it. No, you don't. You're assuming you get me. Why don't you ask me questions and let me explain to you exactly how I feel. Next one, number 13. This is simple. Uh, but it's something, it's so frustrating when a customer goes through this, is a bad attitude. I literally will walk through my office and just look at people that have bad attitudes and I have a conversation with them. They are gonna feel it over the phone. You're gonna feel when somebody has a bad attitude over the phone. It's simple, but it's fixable. Number 14, not building a relationship. Not building a relationship. So tell me about your situation. Tell me what happened. Uh, please share it with me. I understand. I am so sorry. So what was the reasoning for you going to Breckenridge? What took place here? What happened over here? Tell me about, 
you're building a relationship. You know, you, you go to Zappos and the love you give to Zappos is they talk to you. There's a relationship. There's a conversation that you're being had with them. It's not just like, let me get off your phone over there ASAP because we have to, we have to meet them. No, there's a little relationship. That's why Zappos sold for a billion plus and a lot of people made money with it and they did what they did because it was a relationship-based business. Number 15, lack of speed. What is speed? Speed on getting an answer to them, speed on getting back to them, speed on a resolution, speed on talking to a supervisor to have a supervisor call them, it's speed. Customer service nowadays, this may be unfair to the businesses, but today customers are demanding. They want an answer faster. You know, they want an answer on Twitter. Maybe 20 years ago, if there's an issue, there was no email 30 years ago, maybe you gotta wait and someone calls you back. But not today, people want an answer on Twitter today. You have no idea how many businesses I respond to and they don't even respond back on Twitter. It, there is no customer service, the speed is so slow for them and they think it's okay, but there is a reason why some of these bigger companies competing at a bigger scale and some of them are not. Speed, next, talking too much instead of listening. Conversation, you're asking them. They ought to be speaking 80% of the time, you need to be speaking 20% of the time. Next. Tone, number 17, tone. How are you speaking to them? What is your tonality? Is it high? Is it fast? Or is it right in the middle, level, easy going, calm, relaxing? I may be intense right now with a lot of energy I'm talking to you. This is definitely not the tone to be speaking on these calls you're having or customer service calls that you're having with them. So tone, you can teach the tone to your reps when you're speaking to them. Next, number 18, not empowering your staff. What do I mean by not empowering your staff? If I constantly undermine my staff for not doing the right thing, then it's always like, they're also like, man, I don't want to take responsibility out because if they talk to you, you're automatically going to undermine me. So something like, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I understand what you're saying with John. John is actually one of our uh, better customer service reps that we have here. He's been with us for six and a half years. But uh, please tell me, I'd like to hear from you. You know, Bobby, you just spoke to somebody that's very good at what they do, but I'm sorry about your experience that you had. Could you tell me a little bit more about what happened? You're still not undermining everybody that's there. You're still empowering them for them to be able to make some of the bigger decisions. Hey, what do I mean by bigger decisions? I had a conversation with one of my reps today. I said, listen, if you speak to somebody and you feel it makes sense for you to go out there and get, buy them a $50 gift and send it to them, do you need to come and just ask me, can I get this for 50 bucks? I empower you, make the decision, go do it. You don't need to ask me about a, something like that. That's empowering. I felt here I can give this customer a $50 discount rather than have it to come to my supervisor and wait seven minutes until you're available. Empower them. You have the ability to give this much back with this many customers. You're empowering them, they solve the issue faster and they move on. And last but not least, this is the last mistake companies make is one, they don't audit calls and track it weekly. What do I mean by this? So years ago, I worked at Valley Total Fitness and I worked at three different clubs, three gyms. One was Culver City, one was Hollywood, and one was Chatsworth. The thing I loved the most about Culver City was the following. There was no private offices. So everybody who was selling, guess what we can hear? We could hear if somebody was misrepresenting a gym membership and saying, this is month to month. Don't worry about it, you can cancel it in two weeks. No, no, you can't cancel it in two weeks. You got 72 hours. So we would hear each other and all of a sudden somebody would say, hey John, what you just said, that was great, but you can't say that again because they can't cancel a week from now. Oh, okay, no problem. Then all of a sudden I would sit there and I would listen to a guy named Molina, Danny Molina to my left. I'm like, wow, what he said right there was so beautiful. And then when they bought the membership, I love that. And I would write it down. And then I would see another guy named Joe Race. Oh my gosh, that guy was amazing. Then I would look at Dexter McClendon. Then I would, Francisco Davis. Then I'm like, wow, Ruben Rimmer. I'm like, oh my gosh, these guys are amazing. And I was learning from the guys that were doing very good. And, and my tracking, because my boss, Cisco, at that time was listening to me, he was constantly telling me, hey, but David, try this. Hey, try, that was good, but try this, try this. There was a constant weekly auditing. When I moved to Hollywood, everybody sold in private offices. So guess what? Nobody was learning from one another. What's my point to you? I like customer service to be in an open area with desks right next to each other where everybody can hear one another because good can teach good and bad can get caught and filtered out quickly or adjusted quickly before it turns too ugly and all of a sudden you know got a per person here that said something on the phone to a com customer that the customer's right, now you're getting a lawsuit or a complaint from that you gotta deal with, that's the last thing you need. So in order to do that, you got technology nowadays, you can track it, you can listen to all the calls, you can have somebody's job that their entire job is to listen and monitor and do all those other things as the company gets bigger. But I'm assuming you have less than 100 employees. If you have less than 100 employees and a department's being ran by 20 people or 10 people, that's easier for you to track in an environment like this. And once you get to thousands of employees, you'll have the technology to help you do that. So now, 
I told you earlier I'm going to have a, a free PDF for you. I have it. It's in the description below. Click on the link below. Go download the PDF. Print it out. Go through exactly what the eight are and the 19 common mistakes and start highlighting which ones you do well and which ones you don't. Print them out for your employees, your staff, your salespeople, whoever it is you're working with, and go teach it to them. Guys, we got to get better in customer service. We got to get better at this and role play. Here's we got to get better at this. Here's we got to get better at that. Because the reality part of it is this is going to increase the value of your business. It's going to increase the amount of referrals. It's going to increase the amount of people sharing their experiences with you. And your value, your income goes higher. You start making more money. Everybody starts making more money. The value goes higher. So for some of you guys, I want to go even deeper into this. And you want to watch the video that I did called Customer Service versus Customer Experience. You'll see the thumbnail here to my right. Uh, you can go click also on the link below. Maybe on it as well. Are we going to put it on there, Mario, or do we put the link below to watch the video? Will it be on it? Yes. Okay, it'll be on it. Click on that to go watch that episode as well. Uh, and you'll kind of get a little bit deeper dive on what I mean by customer service versus customer experience. Again, more questions, comments, thoughts, comment on the bottom. If you haven't subscribed, click on the sub button. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.